I rise today, I'm going to get into the discussion about amendments that I'm offering to the uh, Shaheen uh, Portman bill. But I've been watching what's been happening on the floor, and I, I, uh, I don't understand this because I've got some amendments that I'm working on that are bipartisan. I know that there have been major endorsements of this bill from the business roundtable to the chamber to many others. And, and what we're seeing here is, is a very targeted attack uh, from the other side to prevent all of these bipartisan amendments from coming forward. So all the debate this week uh, has been good on this bill, but we aren't getting our amendments up. We're not having the ability to debate them, and, and that is just very, very unfortunate. So I'm, I'm one of the ones here that's going to be talking about amendments that I, I think I've been reaching out and I think can be very bipartisan, but we're being blocked, and that's just very, very unfortunate. So I rise today to discuss uh, several amendments to the Energy Savings and Industrial Competitiveness Act. First, I want to thank Senator Shaheen and Portman for working on this important legislation, for working on it so long and being so diligent about it. Energy efficiency is critical for our future, and this bill takes us in the right direction. There are a few areas where I think we need to take additional steps. My first amendment connects energy and water efficiency. Many people do not realize that water efficiency is energy efficiency. Three to four percent of our national electricity consumption is for water and wastewater services each year. That's about five to six billion kilowatts and four billion dollars a year in costs. That is a lot of energy and it's a lot of money. To talk to the water management professionals in your state if you do that, they, they will tell you that these costs add up quickly. The energy use nexus is one that cannot be ignored. The Energy Committee has been engaged in the water energy nexus for some time, both under Senator Bingaman and continuing under Senator Wyden's leadership. And I know uh, the president and presiding officer is on Senator Wyden's committee. He's very uh, interested in this, and, and you've, Senator Wyden, I think, done a very good job in terms of trying to pull all this together. Water and wastewater utilities are typically the largest consumers of energy in towns and cities, often accounting for 30 to 40 percent of total energy consumed. As ratepayers, we all pay those bills. And inefficient systems don't just cost money, they waste huge amounts of water. As much as six billion dollars per year is lost. Let me repeat that. Six billion gallons, six billion gallons of water a year wasted. That is enough water to serve 10 of the largest cities in this country or the entire state of California. To continue this practice while the Southwest and other regions are facing extreme drought is ridiculous. And in some of our communities, it's downright dangerous. We can do better, and we have to. Efficiency of U.S. water and wastewater pumping facilities is about 55%. But for a new, well-designed pumping facility, it's 80%. Consider this, if water and wastewater utilities could reduce energy use by just 10%, it would save about $400 million annually. My amendment calls for a $15 million to support smart water system pilot projects, supporting innovation and the kind of investments today that will pay off tomorrow. Our amendment is fully offset. This is not about adding costs. It's about reducing the costs to ratepayers. So I believe this amendment is worthy of bipartisan support. We have support from almost every major water utility association and from the technology industry. It should be included on any amendment list, especially any bipartisan amendment list. And then as I'm talking about, the blocking is going on from the other side of the aisle to prevent good bipartisan amendments from coming forward. Putting innovation to work in three to five cities is a first step. The program will be jointly managed by the Department of Energy and the EPA. 
to create incentives for public-private partnerships, lowering the cost of innovation, applying best practices to the public and private sectors, and to eventually benefit communities across the entire country. I also plan to introduce a second, more ambitious amendment to improve the water efficiency of our homes, to save water and to lower costs for American families. The average family of four in our country uses 400 gallons of water every day. My amendment will provide funds to states, local government, and utilities to implement incentives and rebates for customers to purchase water-efficient products and landscaping. In addition, the amendment will authorize the EPA Water Sense Program, similar to the Energy, Energy Star Program, to enable Water Sense to improve and expand its labeling system for water-efficient appliances, plumbing fixtures, and landscaping in new homes. My amendment also establishes a grant program called Blue Bank, providing water and sewer utilities with grants for important investments in climate change adaptation, including advanced water supply management, modification of infrastructure, improved planning, and water efficiency and reuse. Finally, I will offer an amendment for a renewable electricity standard to get to 25% renewable electricity by 2025. The first legislation I introduced as a U.S. Senator was to create a national RES. The time is right to put this idea back on the table. Renewables are a crucial part of our energy mix. A national RES will create thousands of jobs that cannot be outsourced and will help revitalize rural America. It has worked in over half the states in the country by guaranteeing a market for wind and sun and other clean energy sources. Renewable energy is a key partner of energy efficiency in a modern energy system. They are often installed side by side, increasing the payback in energy savings and reducing emissions and fighting climate change. Our nation needs a do-it-all, do-it-right energy policy to address global climate change, to reduce our dependence on foreign oil. Those are the big threats, but also a big opportunity. We can create a clean energy economy that leads the world in producing the jobs of the future. Again, I want to thank my colleagues, Senator, Senator Shaheen and Senator Portman for their work, and I look forward to continued bipartisan efforts as we address the energy needs of our country. And I would just say to to Senator uh, Shaheen and, and to uh, uh, Senator Wyden, I, I find it very, very unfortunate that we're in a position now where so many members have come to the floor to offer bipartisan amendments, and you have been stopped in your tracks from moving this bill forward and voting on those amendments and dealing with them. However, you know, let the Senate work its will. But, but uh, once again, I know you're trying to cut through that, but I wish uh, that the other side of the aisle would let us proceed on the bipartisan amendments and move forward. Thank you, and I, I see Senator Wyden is here. Mr. On President, the <coughs> Mr. President I, I just want to thank uh, Senator Udall for steering the Senate towards a very sensible, important area. Last year, it's my understanding, we had the worst drought in our country's history since the Dust Bowl. So we are looking at some serious, serious drought issues in the days ahead. And what you are suggesting is that we start very modestly. You've got some voluntary efforts. These are not mandatory, not run from Washington. One size fits all Leviathans that would inflict pain and trauma on local communities. They're voluntary. They're about saving water, which is about saving um, energy. In our part of the world, the West, this is especially important. But I think what we saw last year with these extraordinary drought uh, conditions, this is something that isn't going to go away. So Senator Murkowski and I have already begun to look at these uh, issues. And I'll just say for myself that I'm looking forward very closely
to working with you on these issues, and I'm very hopeful that we can get your amendment up and we can work out some way to advance this uh, idea because water is frankly an issue that's gotten short shrift. It's gotten short shrift in the West, but it's gotten short, short shrift in terms of our policy debates. And I think you are clearly starting us in the right direction, and I look forward to working closely with you. Senator from New Hampshire. Thank you. Before the senator from New Mexico leaves, I, I just wanted to also commend him for his work. I haven't seen the amendment that you would like to offer, and like you, I'm so disappointed that you're not able to offer that right now, that it's being held up on an unrelated issue. But as you point out, there is a clear nexus between water and energy use. Uh, I remember visiting the wastewater treatment plant in North Conway, New Hampshire, and being told that 4% of our energy use in the country is with wastewater treatment. And we've, I've seen that at the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard, um, where they do such great work on Los Angeles class and Virginia class submarines that as they have cut back their energy use, they've also been able to cut back their use of water in a way that is provided for tens of thousands of gallons in savings in water, as well as uh, tremendous savings in energy use. So this is um, a connection that we all, all ought to be making as we look at our energy use in the future. And I really appreciate your working on this amendment, your interest in offering it. And I certainly hope that we're going to get to the point here where we can actually debate the amendments that people are bringing to the floor. because. We've got so much bipartisan support for not only the bill, but for so many amendments. I appreciate my colleague from Ohio, Senator Portman, his partnership in working on this legislation. This is a win, 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 and we really need to move this forward. Thank you. Senator from New Mexico. And, and let, me, let me thank uh, uh, Senator Shaheen and, and Senator Wyden, and I see Senator Portman is on the floor, too, and I, I just want to say to Senator Portman the, the partnership that you two have developed has been incredibly impressive, and I know how hard you've worked on this bill, and really our intent here, as many of you are, want to try to improve it. We want to try to bring forward bipartisan amendments, and so I hope we can all work together to, to make sure that whatever roadblocks and objections are out there, that we can deal with this bill in a way where the bipartisan amendments can be voted on, we can move the bill along, and let the Senate work its will, because this is the kind of bill that I believe can pass in the House of Representatives, because you two have worked so hard over the last uh, couple of years on this. So I yield the floor.